Take it easy there. Take it easy. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Say, Alfred, aren't they your boys? Whose idea that was? It's mine. Uh... <laughs> if you ask me, you've taken leave of your senses. You could have killed your brother with that thing. But I. But nothing. You take your harebrained contraption home and dismantle it, do you hear? Seems to me that motor wasn't working. I repaired it. I never want to see that tomfool thing again. You understand? Of all the nonsense. Now go home, will you? Let's go, Leopold. Fetch the greaser. You want the big one? Yeah. Okay. Monsieur Adrien Lévesque? Yeah. They told me you needed a mechanic, sir. I need a mechanic, not some kid out of school. I'm not very experienced, but at least I'm not afraid of work. Besides, I know motors. I've always had a feel for them. Hey, guys, we got us a new greaseroo. <laughs> you think you'll be able to fix that thing? Sure I can.
Luke's not eating. He forgot to bring his lunch. <laughs> <laughs> you should have told the kid I sweat blood over that for three weeks. Sure, I know. There's just no use the motor's done for. For three weeks, eh? I want to try her out. I won't be gone long. Hey, young fella! As good as you used to be, Henri. Well, how's the city? I'm glad to be here, that's for sure. No trouble finding jobs? Ah, oh, there's plenty to be had, but. <laughs> and the girls? <laughs> <laughs> he never gives them a thought. <laughs> Joseph Armand. Gonna build a garage. And with father's help, too. I'll wager 10 cents on the next game. How about that? Oh. <laughs> I'll break off you. Have you got it? Yep, I've got it. Let's have it then. No, no, wait, no, wait. Let me line up the shaft first. No, here, I'll do it. Go ahead. <laughs> Once more, harder. <laughs> Heavy breathing won't do it. Yeah, well, if you ask me, it's frozen gas line. No, 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 no. Try it again now. <laughs> Let me show you how. It's not a meat grinder, you know. You have to have the right touch. Papa! <laughs> Germain, you haven't finished eating. I'll come right back. I won't be long.
Oh, good Lord. Germain! Germain, stay here! It's too dangerous to go near that thing. An open country. You promised Germain you'd go sledding. Oh, I won't be long. It won't take half an hour. Instead of fooling around with that, you might try to spend some time with your family. Germain, I told you before, it's dangerous. You stay here. Don't you ever listen. Here, you best take them. They might come in handy. Alma, hurry up! I can't wait to try her! It won't take me long. Hang on! Watch where you're going with that! I don't want to get hurt! Papa! Woo-hoo! <laughs> <laughs> They're such children. Hasn't even been broken. You ask me, we're good and stuck. You know what, Leopold? We've just covered five miles on the snow in less than two ticks. You know what, Armand? Now we've got to walk five miles in the snow before we get back home. So who cares? <laughs> Here. <laughs> We're stuck in the snow seven months of the year. How can you get ahead when you can't get around? When you're all alone, isolated? Why, sure, but it's always been like that. We're no worse off than other folks. Hey! <laughs> Come on! <laughs> Help me up, Alma! Come on! I've got it almost all figured out. The problem is we're working on something that's too small. Suppose we were to build a car that was capable of transporting a lot of people, like a little bus. Did you say a bus? Yeah. In midwinter, in the open countryside. Yeah, that's right. A sort of bus that, that would float right over soft snow as well as ice. Come on now. <laughs> hey? <laughs> you want to construct a bus in your garage? Well, why not? Hey! 
Are you trying to pull my leg out, Ma? That's the wildest idea you've had yet. <laughs> You're a doubting Thomas. You're a dreamer. <laughs> You'll see, Leopold. <laughs> <laughs> Are you losing another game to him, Leopold, as usual? Mm-hmm. You owe me 10 cents. Just as lucky as always. <laughs> and try not to dawdle too long. I'm anxious to try it out this afternoon. Sure, I'll be there to help you. You want a break? Huh? Shall we meet? It sure beats me the way your brother wastes his time and his money fooling around with those contraptions of his. He's the finest mechanic that we've ever had in a village. It's not a contraption, it's a prototype. Leopold, you can call it whatever you want. Joseph Armand can't be serious. Everyone thinks that. I'm not the only one. But when you need someone to repair your rig again, you're happy you've got him around. Uh huh, that's true. But when he's stalled somewhere far from the village with his prototype, He's happy he can call on my team of horses for help. <laughs> <laughs> well, now then. So long. See you, Robert. But all those machines can do is get stuck in the snow. If they don't fall apart first, they never work, which gets him in a temper. Believe me, he's going to wind up by, by losing his soul. They're instruments of the devil, those things are. to get warm for a few minutes. No, no, I haven't got time. Oh, come on. Whoa! Whoa. Come on, let's go. Your brother's Go on, hopeless. go on. Hey, hey, wait, we'll help you. No, no, go on now, go on. Yeah, yeah, yeah! Exaudinos Domine Sancte, Pater Omnipotens, Eterni Deus, et mitere dignere sanctum angelum tuum de celis, qui custodiat, foviat, protegat, visitet, atque defendat omnes habitantes in hoc habitaculo, per Christum Dominum nostrum. Amen. 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 You should get him to Sherbrooke. He may not live through the night. You'll see, Angel. You're going to be all right. I know you can make it. Germain outside.
What can we do? All the roads are blocked. It's liable to take two days, and then it'll be too late. No, no, Germain, stay here. You can't leave with that. He'll die of appendicitis. Hey, that's no way for you to talk. I'm sure he'll pull through. The motor still overheats. It's good for a few miles and... You think it might be worth taking a chance? That should let more air in. Might not be enough, though. <laughs> We've nothing to lose, so why don't we try? Open the door. Okay. right here, okay?
stop? Well, I think that's it. Now can I loosen the binder? Yeah. I'll need a good six inches. Monsieur Bombardier? Right. I'm sorry to bother you. It's, it's because I was a mechanic in town, but I came back to Valcourt. I know motors. I've always had a feel for them. I know how to work. Grab one end. Uh, and I'm a good mechanic, too, you know, but the garage where I worked had to close because of the uh, crisis. No, no, not that way. You have to use both hands to do it right. Oh. Huh. I gave you four inches. I'll need more than four inches, though. A good mechanic is always welcome, as long as the garage is open. But in winter, go get me that steel bar there. Oh, sure. It doesn't pay in winter time. That's okay. Let me go to work for you and pay me when you get enough money. <laughs> hey, 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 don't pull so hard. I'm not there yet. Well, come on, come on. I don't know if these treads are wide enough, though. Well, we'll see. Let me have that bar. You willing to work this way? Yes, I am, sir. I knew four inches wouldn't be enough. Good. Wait a minute. Do you want me to do anything? You're not afraid of work, you say? Oh. <laughs> What's wrong? You're not interested? No, no, uh, yeah. But it's just that your chair... Oh, don't worry about the chair. This is a place where you work. If you want to talk, stay in the village. I hope you're at least able to start a motor. Oh, sure I can. First one of these we sell, we'll pay you. I'm ready to begin work today. <laughs> if you put the motor in the rear, then you're spreading the weight out over the whole tread as well. Mm. Why don't you eat? It's going to be cold. I can't believe that I never even thought of it till now. Why is it always dull? Well, I won't anymore, though. Or I can explain if you want. Hand me your truck. Look, you see the tread went here, over the wheels, eh? But from now on, here's the sprocket, which turns with the engine. And that's what turns the treads. Now that's separate. And it's not a part of the suspension. Really, you don't expect the boy to understand that. I understand. Right. You see, because we now have the motor installed in the rear. Ivan, the motor's installed in the rear, which means less weight here. You see that? Madame Bombardier? Yeah. Yes? I'm Dr. Andre Lefebvre from Roxton Falls. Ah, how do you do? Monsieur Bombardier. Yes? I see I've come at an awkward hour. I know, not at all. Oh. Will you have some soup? Oh, no, no, thanks, no thanks. Uh, I heard a lot about those machines of yours, and I wondered if, uh, well, if you sold them at all. Oh, uh, well... Why, certainly. Oh. Why don't I show you right away? Well... <laughs> Germain, go and get Leopold and Denis Leblanc. Oh, no, no, And please. tell them we'll be at the garage. No, no, finish eating first. I, I'm in no rush. Now that you're here, we might as well. Come along. Well, you'll excuse me? <laughs> no, it's all right. Give me that. Here, tighten it up. Your ball! Huh? It's a very impressive invention there. Starter. Close it up. <laughs> you don't want to go too far. I won't. Don't worry. Hey, I have a lot of friends who'd be interested in hop this. In, hop in, hop in, and we'll try it out. That way you'll have a good idea. 
Does it drive like an automobile or what? Just like a car. Let me show you. Oh. <laughs> going to be ill over those machines. Oh, I know. I love it. Why can't you be like everyone else? Don't say that. I am like everyone else. You've struggled for ten years. I know. I've worked hard. But I already sold eight. And my machine is patented. You're never home. Always at the garage. Yeah. Ah, uh, you're right. And now you've got insomnia. 
You're going to ruin your health. I know, I'm not. We wouldn't want to be without you. I'll live forever. Sleep. Someone said you'd heard from Ottawa. Yeah. Ten in the corner. Well? Did you have good news? Oh, yeah. Yeah. They finished their study. In the report, they said that if I sold that patent of mine, to Detroit, for example, that it ought to be worth uh, the nine in the side. How much? Somewhere around 5,000. You won't sell it. How many years have I gone on working like a demon with no one who'd believe in me or my inventions? Yeah, I'm planning to sell the patent. Plan to sell the garage, too. Sell it all and make enough to retire on. Retire? At 31? You're joking. It's not a bad idea, but... 12 in the corner. Hello. Raymond just sold another snowmobile. Not paid for yet, but it's a sure thing. To who? To the priest in Windsor, Father Lisey. He's quite a salesman, you know. Yeah, well, I hate to be the one to spoil your fun, but I think you've just lost your jobs. How come? He wants to close the garage. That's right. They offered him 5000 for his patent. But that doesn't sound a bit like you. Look at it my way. Right now, the price is right, and you never know what it'll be worth a year from now. Combination in the corner. Well, of course, if I didn't feel that I was all alone, then things might look different to me. What do you mean, all alone? I've worked two months, and I've already sold that. My decision is made. The garage will be a factory producing snowmobiles. <laughs> Here in Valco? It's one thing to close the garage, but don't try to be another Ford. Leopold, I'm not going to work for someone else the rest of my life. I'm keeping my patent. He's right, too. You've got to stay in control. Yeah, sure, if you want to build 10 snowmobiles a year. More than 10, Leopold, 100. The demand is there. If we meet it, we can supply a lot more. Fifteen in the corner. If we're capable of building ten, we're capable of a hundred. A hundred machines. Believe me, I'll sell them, too. And we're going to be called L'Autoneige Bombardier Snowmobiles. <laughs> <laughs> the eight, cross side. You saw the monster, no doubt. 
It's never going to replace horses, that's for sure. But then again, there must be some use for it. Oh, Dr. Lefebvre told me that he wouldn't part with his for any amount. When do you leave? Uh, after Christmas, but I'm not sure. Did they tell you where you'll be sent? You go to England first. After that, they wouldn't say. Would you? I've been assigned to a mission in Northern Ontario. I leave for there in the spring, after my ordination. Monsieur Bombardier, <clears throat> everyone's here. It might be a good idea to make your speech. <clears throat> a gentleman? Don't worry. Monsieur Bombardier has a very important announcement. I've asked our partners and our employees to gather here this morning because every one of you is concerned. I would have thought that it was bigger than this. Oh, no, for now, it's still at the artisan stage, but you'll see it has a brilliant future. Mm -hmm. Give me a picture of the garage, huh? Well, come on, I'll introduce you to him. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Ah, Dr. Lefebvre. Monsieur Bombardier. <laughs> I'd like to present Monsieur Antoine Tremblay, a reporter on the staff of the Sherbrooke Tribune. Monsieur Tremblay. Uh, Marie-Jeanne Dupol, our executive secretary. Pleased to meet you, and welcome to Bombardier. Thank you, madame. Uh, my brother, Leopold, he's the one in charge of production. Ah, in fact, I've just come here in, in Dr. Lefebvre's snowmobile. It does make quite a racket, doesn't it? It shakes the bones, too. Excuse me. Uh -huh. <laughs> Monsieur Tremblay, we've already spoken on the phone. Uh. Alphonse Raymond Bombardier? Ah, why, well, yes, of course I remember. Excuse me. Do you mind if I ask what brings you here? That's our new model, the B7. She's a beauty, eh? I think you'll find it has little to do with Dr. Lefebvre's snowmobile. Now we've modified the suspension completely. Hmm. B7? Bombardier. Seven passengers. Uh. Yes, the body is our creation. Comes with a six-cylinder from Chevrolet. Standard, with the option of a Ford V8, the flat head. It's a simple one to get repaired. For the coming winter alone, we've got 97 orders on the books. You're planning to construct them all here? Yes, why not? We've already turned out half that many here and next door. Monsieur Bombardier, I think your employees are impatient. Yeah. Well, come over and have a look, everyone. Come on, join us. Are you ready? Now, thanks to the municipality, to members of my family, and to the investment of certain individuals, like Mademoiselle Dupol, we'll be able to build our own factory here in Valcourt next summer. <laughs> Monsieur Bombardier? Monsieur Bombardier. Excuse me. Sorry. <coughs> it's just that you realize, don't you, uh, that there's a war in Europe? Don't you find your plans go against the tide? I mean... Just what are you saying? The government has set up a commission to monitor and to standardize industrial production. They will place strict limits on the introduction of new products. Doesn't that worry you? Monsieur Tremblay, you must know there's nothing new about the snowmobile. For the past two years, we've been building machines. Besides, every one of our orders has been confirmed. Some of our customers have even paid in advance. Mademoiselle Dupal, this is the factory. Oh, that's oh, brilliant. Oh, that's oh, interesting. interesting. As far as the building itself goes, it's my brother Leopold who worked out the design with me. There will be two floors. The assembly line's on the lower one. We should be turning out 200 snowmobiles per year. And the resulting new jobs will benefit the whole village. Ah. 
just a second. You mean you were thinking of making skilled workers out of the local farmers? Is that it? That's it, Monsieur Tremblay. If you come closer, you'll get a better look at the plants. Well, come on. Come have a look. Come here. That's how the front will look. You see that? I don't know what happened. He seemed so enthusiastic when we talked about it. I don't know. What's the matter with the man? That won't stand in the way of Joseph Armand Bombardier. Well, all that counts is that he prints a good story. He really believes in what he's doing, and so do the rest of us. <laughs> I don't doubt it. Uh, excuse me there. Uh, Monsieur Bombardier, I'd like my assistant to photograph all three brothers in front of the snowmobile. Huh? Yeah. Uh, wait a minute there, Mademoiselle Dupol, come here. Mademoiselle Dupol now numbers among my closest collaborators. We won't see the snowmobile as well, though. We'll get closer. There was something else I wondered about, Monsieur Bombardier. May I ask you why you saw fit to print your brochures in English only? Being from Valcour, I should have thought you would have... It gives some people an excuse to talk. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it's because of the patents which are filed in Ottawa. All the plans, the publicity must be written in English. Does that answer your question? Of course it does. It does indeed. He's a dreamer, and he's going to bite the dust. Well, so much for that. Is that going to be in the Tribune? Yeah. continues in a series of skirmishes. Yesterday, the aerial activity centered over the British Isles, where the RAF propelled a foray by German reconnaissance planes. Several coastal villages near Newcastle were damaged by debris from anti-aircraft shells. News dispatches from Denmark cite eyewitness accounts of aerial engagements. In addition, there have been reports of Allied raids on German bases near Stop the Bay it, of That doesn't However, belong to you. Give it to me, Janine. I can play with it if I want. This is mine, you know. It is not! Jamais, would you mind leaving her alone? But that's my toy. She took it from me. Not everything is his fault, you know. It doesn't seem like he'll ever grow up. You wouldn't have seen my order book. Seems to me I left it on the table. It's in your suitcase, so you wouldn't forget it. <laughs> How are my good girls? Hmm? <laughs> See your nose there? Whoop! I've got it. Let's give it to Jenny. Here, Jenny. No, I'll give it back to you then. Poof. <laughs> Have you talked with Raymond? When was he going to get here? Well, we said nine o'clock. You're in too big of a hurry. You want a new factory? You want to build 200 of those things which you want to sell? Besides, you have all those new patents to apply for. I don't know where you're going to find time to do all that. Don't you think I can do it all? Why, of course, I know that you will. Hey, I've also been thinking of building a new house. <laughs> no, no, Janine, stay down there. Watch Claire. Just what are you saying? You think I do too much? No, let me. What is it? Is anything wrong? It's Germain. What's the trouble? Yesterday, he said that... What did he say? He seems to think you never even look at him now. He thinks he hasn't got time for you anymore. I don't have time for him. Where did he get that idea? Oh, come on. You don't even realize it, do you? What? You're always so busy with your machines. As if you didn't want to bother with him. Hmm. Is that how he feels? Hmm. I've got so much to attend to, there's no time for anything else. All he needs is a little attention. Why do you think he's such a nuisance now and then? Well, he wants you to notice him. Is that all right? Uh-huh. I'm sure it'd be worth the trouble if you would try. Oh, I will, then. Good. You're so handsome in your new suit, Alma. 
It's so chic. Just what are you two doing there? The little frog went fishing and caught a big baboon by the tail. The, the little, little frog, frog went fishing and caught a big baboon by the tail. The little frog went fishing and caught a big baboon by the tail. The little frog went fishing and caught a big baboon by the tail. Kuichi kuichi ku by the tail. Kuichi kuichi ku by the tail. Kuichi ku by the tail. Do you know where my shoes are? Oh, we have to take a picture. No, I haven't got time. Oh yes. Come on. <laughs> now where are? Just for laughs, for us. Oh, sure, just for laughs, just for laughs indeed. Oh, I know where. Germain, would you bring me my shoes? I think I left them downstairs. Yeah, sure. They were right next to the stove. Uh, Yvonne, I left my dark glasses up there. Move to the right. A little more? Why no to the other right? <laughs> now look, you see this here? Ah, oh, that looks good. <laughs> It'd be better with your suitcase, Arma. You look more like a businessman. There's no time for that now. Oh, wait, I'll go get it for you. Oh, here, Germain, I really don't have time. Oh, that's going to be good. You're in the way, Germain. No, no, stay right here. Raymond, hurry up. We'll be late. I'm coming. Did you get your picture yet? It's true, though. It makes for serious problems. Often I wait four or five days before I can collect the body. No, it'll be the ideal thing for your needs, Mr. Girard. Good, good, good. You know, that's, uh, 
And when you do go to collect the zoo, they always come in a coffin that big? That depends on the corpse. Yeah. <clears throat> no, Raymond, it won't fit through the door. Let me have your answer, yeah? Oh, yeah, we just got that one. But you have a door back here, though. Ah, uh, that's the motor there. But if it's just a question of the door, I'm certain we can find a solution, huh? No, oh, that shouldn't be a problem. It would be practical. I'll think about it. Want to go for a ride? The service is at four. Uh huh. Well, why not? Get inside. <laughs> Five and all. Hmm, I see. So draw us real well. That's one fine idea. Right. Five dollars? That's just perfect. Won't regret it. This little camp stove works real well. <laughs> they sell us a camp stove and we sell them a B7. Not such a bad deal, eh? You wonder how they think up such things, huh? Ah, uh, it's well made. It's simple, the sort of thing I know. Hmm. Yeah, but there's no comparison. It's not in the same league as your inventions. Oh, if I hadn't thought of it, someone else would have. Alma, your ideas have changed winter transportation for good. The B7 is no mere plaything. Raymond. We always think we're so important and so indispensable. But we're not. Ah. It's a remote country, sure, but beautiful, too. Yeah. How's that for tranquility? Must have always been just the same. You don't want to go back to the old days again. No, no, that's not what I said. No, when we go hunting, Leopold and me, nothing counts. No noise, no worries. Well, if we're gonna eat, we'll need knives and forks and plates. We still have to get the cabano. Here. There's no noise, and there's no worries. Yeah, well. Will that do you? Sure, that's fine. How many have we sold since we've been gone? 37. Good. Dr. La Casa Trois Pistel, he's well known. That should be worth five other sales in the region. But, uh, we want to be sure Leopold knows that we're making more sales than we have planned on. Don't worry about Leopold. You'll just hire more people. We'll run the factory around the clock then. Quite a sight, eh? from Ford, Chevrolet, and Chrysler to be rationed. All deliveries will soon stop. What do we do, Leopold? 
Yeah. The official war controls. That's impossible. All our production sold in advance. We've got to find motors. If the government begins to meddle with us, I don't know. Look, we'll find a way out. Oh, I doubt that. Not with a war going on. We said we'd be at the garage in Matan at four. Hmm? We'll call it off. We're going to Valcourt. Now, wait. We can't sell snowmobiles that we know won't be delivered. made a huge deposit, so naturally you want us to deliver. But it's not something we can control. Hello, Bombardier Snowmobiles. I know that. I know, but this is Ottawa's decision. One moment, please. Leopold, Leopold, telephone. You think about it, Leopold. No, we're not allowed to have motors it's because Mr. of Blackburn rationing. And Sherbrooke. We're, hel we're helpless. I'm Ted Dupont. Let me have the file. Hello? Hello, Bombardier Snowmobiles. Hello? I know all too well. One second, sir. When? Now look, all I can say is there are 100 snowmobile bodies in the shop, and not one has a motor. It's, um... I know, neither do I, but, but no one expects you to return to the days of the horse and buggy either. But I've already done as much as I can. Monsieur Girard, who owns the funeral home. Yes. As soon as I've checked the stock room, then. Bye. Oh, no. Reimbursing you is another question. Yeah, I could talk with my brother about it, but I'm not sure we can. Anyhow, not for a while. I understand the position you're in, but there's a war going on, Georges. The Army's priorities come first. Besides, we can't reopen the factory without having the Transportation Ministry on our backs. That's it. Monsieur Girard? I'll get back he to you. He won't be much longer. Hello, Monsieur Girard. No, uh, not very good news, I'm afraid. You find someone to do it, will you? Well? Well, I spoke to Cyprien Godet. If we want to buy reconditioned motors, they'll come up with seven or eight. You know we can't afford to do that. The company has a reputation for quality. Yes, but we can't let our customers down that way. We have contracts that we have to respect. Even if we want to respect them, we can't. As a result of the current situation due to the war, the Canadian government will take control of all transport on land, on sea, and in the air. That's that. If you don't work for the Army, you have no rights anymore. The B-12 they took still hasn't come back yet? It seems they can requisition any vehicle that might be useful in a war. That's also the law, you see. Have you heard anything about it? Their engineers are studying the question. In that case, we'll have to make a decision about the men. Let me think. Since we've had a real bathroom, they won't do anything else. <laughs> I'll dig them a pool then. I'll get you something to eat. No, just let me have some soup. I've got to go back to work. Ah. Hello? Yes? Of course. Leopold? No, it's, uh, 
It's not Leopold. Ah, it's you. I uh, spoke to your brother this afternoon. Mm hmm. Apparently, uh, a meeting scheduled for tonight. Could be. As you know, uh, a lot of people have been asking questions lately. The workers are worried. It's wartime, Monsieur Tremblay. Is this your new model? Yeah. The B-12. Bombardier 12 passengers. There's a rumor going around. Apparently, the men who were laid off are permanently unemployed. Oh, rumors only concern the journalists. Yes, but Monsieur Bombardier, everyone wants to know what you think. When the government makes decisions, nobody wants to know what I think. There are people who say you're going to go bankrupt. <laughs> Tell anyone who thinks I'll go bankrupt, they can come here and see me. The problem nowadays is that folks say whatever they want. I'm gonna keep the factory going, and whatever it takes, I'll do it. But we can't produce miracles. For the moment, the government of Canada is in command, so we all work for the war effort together. That means the Bombardier Company as well. Armand? Yes, I'm here. Monsieur Tremblay. Good evening. Look, uh... I spoke to the lawyer about our deposit. Yes, just a second. Was that all? Good night, Monsieur Tremblay. I tell you, that meant Tremblay. Well, Raymond, I've done the figures. If we reimburse around 30 of our clients, those who invested the biggest amounts, then we lose part of our reserve, but it won't be dramatic. By reducing the workforce, we can operate six months without closing. And we can work it out easily by the end of this week. That should take a big load off us because the telephone rings when we haven't hung up yet. Raymond, you can forget your papers now. Now look, Armand, it won't work. Is there anything you're keeping from us? I just had a phone call. The army. They want to see me. <laughs> <laughs> right! <laughs> right! <laughs> yes! <laughs> well, what do you know? <laughs> oh, yes, sir. That's a promise. Um, first of November? No, 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 no. All right. Very well. Uh, I don't really know. Maybe, uh... Listen, as soon as I know, I'll call you. Hello, sir. Well, let's see, uh, two, maybe three weeks? <clears throat> no, no, I understand. Yes. Well, we knew about that. Well, you know, uh, I'll be passing through Windsor tomorrow. I could see you then. Bonjour, Major McBain. Je me rappelle avec uh, Mr. Why, Bombardier. Yes, of course. Yes, of course. Uh, Mr. Bombardier is expecting ah. you. What? Monsieur Bombardier, Major McBain to see you. Why, yes, I know. Ah, uh, yes, come in, come in. Uh -huh. I really am delighted to make your acquaintance. Why, yes. Major, good of you to come. Whatever time you say. Uh -huh. That's up to you. Good, as you like, as you like. Uh, two o'clock, then. Right. Yes, I'll be there. Fine, fine. The lads at headquarters wanted me to have a chat with you. Our engineers have been studying your B-12. Extraordinary. I'd like to know who drew these. <laughs> the Allies want to acquire a snowmobile to transport their commandos in the north of Europe and in Scandinavia. They want to sabotage the bases of the Germans. The Americans have been working to perfect such a machine. A bulletproof vehicle that uh, could maneuver across the snow. 
but their research isn't getting anywhere. <laughs> Are you with me, Mr. Bombardier? Why, yes, of course. I'm listening. As soon as we discovered your uh, machine, we knew we had the solution to almost all of our problems. In fact, we just have to armor your machine. Armor it? But... I know, I know. It will create a problem of weight, hmm. but it's nothing we can't handle. Armoring a B-12. Sit down, will you? We should be able to do that here. Here? We have the workers, the machinery. Of course, someone will have to get us the motors. Mr. Bombardier, before coming to the equipment, uh, I think we might discuss your collaborators. Outside help. Our own team is first rate. We'll give you two of the best engineers in America. Technicians who are fantastic. We trust them. Frank McIntyre, GM's top engineer, specializes in transmissions, and Patrick Nolan, head designer at BF Goodrich. He'll be very useful in redesigning the suspension. Yeah, I look forward to hearing their point of view. I'm glad you understand. If you need any uh, equipment, material, and so on... We'll give you a list. <clears throat> the Army wants to start production as, as soon as possible. As soon as the engineers have concluded their tests. I must know how many you'll want. About... Uh, 130 vehicles. By when? We'll need them by March, uh, around the 1st. That should give you about four months. 130 armored cars, four months. What's the problem? No problem, no problem.